all. Bear with me. All right, let me go. Marcus, you'll get a notification. You'll be coming in shortly. Hey, hey, Grayson. I was just moving your painting around in my house today. So I'll have to send you a picture. Um, waiting for you, Marcus. Make sure your Wi-Fi is on. I am well and busy, but I'm well. So let me try it again. Sorry, guys, technical issues. All right, Marcus, trying it again. Sometimes there are technical issues with connecting. So here it goes, there you are. Hello. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm well, great to see you. It's been a few years. It's been a few years, yeah, we met Ah, we were going back like in 2010 when you were yes. doing an exhibition exactly. in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I had my Bravo show. Yeah. That was the, was that the icon show that you were doing? Uh, it was called Double Exposure. Double Exposure. That's right. Yeah, it was like, you know, your typical, I was like a housewife with a camera. Your typical <laughs> Bravo reality show, you know. I had great guests, though. I mean, I had Lady Gaga and. Yeah. And Campbell and mm -hmm. Lindsay Lohan who was obviously huge at that time, you know, remember her? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I remember. Yeah. That was it was huge. And I that's when I met you the very first time. Yeah, those were and the good days, you know. I got familiar with your work and I actually got one of your your photos, your beautiful uh, Bowie with the white wolf, uh the protector photo at that yeah. point and fell in love with your work and uh, followed your career ever since and you know, it's such a pleasure to have you on. And I just want to do a little brief intro. So basically, um, this is the Thinking of Art Call series. It's something that I started last year uh, to really introduce everybody to different artists, whether they be painters, photographers, sculptors, interior designers, creatives. And today we have Marcus Klinko, who's an internationally uh, a renowned photographer, celebrity photographer, and shot everyone from you know, you name it, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Mariah Carey, David Bowie, the list goes on and on and on. So with that, Marcus, can you just uh, give us, give everybody uh, kind of a little background of how you got started? Yeah, I actually started out my, my you know, professional career as a classical harp soloist, which, you know, has really not much to do with what we're talking about here. My father mm -hmm. was a member of, of various symphony orchestras throughout his life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I grew up in Switzerland. Yeah. And, uh, you know, early on in life, desired to become a, a, a classical musician. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for, for um, some reason, I chose the harp. Um, actually, I started out with guitar, but I chose the harp. And, you know, to make a long story short, I ended up studying in Paris at the, at the Paris Conservatory. And uh, a few years later signed the only exclusive recording contract in the world at that time for classical harpist with EMI. No way. And uh, toured the world for a few years. And then in 1994, after you know, maybe six, seven years of a, of a really successful career as a, as, a, as a musician, I had a hand issue with my right hand. And um, very quickly, sort of almost epiphany-like, I decided to kind of put, you know, every, all of this music career stuff to rest and start something completely different and became a, be, be, uh, decided to become a fashion photographer. And I had no formal training whatsoever. I actually no idea how a camera works. I never took pictures at that point, but I was familiar with the photography studio because during my career for album covers and magazine articles and so on, I was photographed a lot myself. Yeah. So, um, that helped me with, you know, kind of like figuring things out. And I read a book by Ansel Adams, how cameras work. You know, at the time it was a little harder than now. If you want to pick up photography now, you're probably going to be able to do this easier because everything is digital. Right, and right. You don't have to bring, you know, film to the lab and work with Polaroids mm -hmm. and 
you know, learn all that stuff. So in 1994, you know, there was no digital photography uh, that we, like we know now that started, you know, much later. Mm -hmm. So all of my earlier work, including the work with David Bowie and Beyonce, for instance, is all shot on film. Um, I started my relationship with Fujifilm back in the 2000s. And, you mm -hmm. know, they were very helpful in actually developing my secondary career that started around 2016 when right. I started doing art exhibitions okay. in various galleries around the world. So, uh, you know, now I really divide my time between what I call the active photography, shooting new work, and managing and developing my career as an art gallery photographer, which doesn't okay. mean that I'm shooting, you know, work that typically would be deemed art photography work because everything is celebrities and models and it's you know mm -hmm. sort of in the general genre of fashion mm -hmm. but um who knows what's coming next you know i'm really excited about nfts i'm really excited about the the, the new developments of um yeah absolutely there there's so much changing i mean so quickly things are changing um, but just, I wanted to go back to David Bowie in particular, because I think that's the series that is really, people are really gravitating more towards from the collector side. And can you give us the backstory on how that whole photo shoot came about in 2001? Yeah. So in 2001, you know, I was pretty much still an up and coming photographer. I didn't really, you know, had a real, you know, major breakthrough yet at that point. But I was working, you know, I was shooting for magazines and, you know, the mm -hmm. typical editorial kind of background. Yeah. And one day uh, I worked with a makeup artist who was very famous, Paul Starr, who asked me during the shoot if I ever worked with Iman, the famous supermodel and David Bowie's wife. And sure. of course I hadn't. And I, you know, I told him that uh, I thought she was amazing. And he said, I could easily you know, have a look at your work. And uh, I gave him my portfolio and he sent it over. And to make a long story short, within a day, Iman called me and she wanted to come over to my studio immediately and said she had a project. So she showed up uh, and, you know, it was like amazing to meet her. And she was, you know, just even more glamorous that you could imagine. I, I and she explained to me that she wanted to do, me to shoot the cover of her new book. She had a coffee table book in the works for which she used many photos inside the book, you know, from Helmut Newton to Stephen Meisel to, you know, everybody she worked with during her incredible career. Mm -hmm. But she said, for some reason, she, she felt compelled to ask me to do the cover, which of course was enormously flattering and very unexpected, you know, for me, mm -hmm. given my career at that point. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I jumped right into it. And the shoot went really well. And Alexander McQueen, for instance, you know, he sent over these dresses and everything. So it was, you know, sort of, I was catapulted into this amazing opportunity. And two days later, without <laughs> me having any clues, she yeah. came back to, you know, to see the edits, to choose the photos. And she rang the doorbell downstairs. And she was just saying, oh, by the way, I'm here with David. So I didn't even know Amazing. what she was talking about for a second because you know I was confused. And then you know I opened the door and I saw walking up the stairs, David Bowie and and Iman. And you know I was like kind of in shock. I just didn't expect it. And then he he looked at started looking at the photos with her. And within about five minutes, you know, at the time it was you know with the loops, you're on like the light table. You look at it's not like on a screen. It's yeah. like, you know physical physical. Uh, uh, transparency is looking at with Lube and he just kind of turned around and said, I know I'm working on an album. Uh, would you be interested to shoot the cover for my new album? And you can imagine, you know, I was pretty excited. Uh, happy yeah, absolutely. Photos, you know, so first you're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah, I did not say no, but <laughs> there was a little bit of a caveat, which is this was about two weeks before September 11th. Ah. So within, you know, uh, uh, a very short time, New York was pretty much, you remember, you know, yeah, it was first. shut down, not, not, nothing happened. And I kind of yeah. thought, well, that's it. It's never going to happen. He's going to forget. 
and I went on, you know, to do other shoots, and I, I went to Berlin for for a big campaign and stuff. But as I came back from Berlin, uh, maybe a month later, he called me again, and uh, he said, you know, I'm ready. You want to come over to my studio? And I went to his recording studio, which was literally three blocks away from my photography studio, which I was in Soho at the time. And so, you know, literally just crossed a couple blocks and um, found him in the studio with his producer. And he started playing the tracks from his new album, which was Hidden. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, told me his ideas and his, his like, you know, what he wanted to achieve for the cover. But he was very clear that he was really interested in a, in a real collaboration and wanted me to be able to add other ideas and so on. The yeah. only thing that he was very specific about, which was also so interesting and showed how visionary he was, is that at that time, my work was like exclusively color. I, I really, you know, early 2000s, remember that time, you know, mm -hmm. black and white just was not something I felt particularly drawn to. And yeah. he really wanted me to shoot a, a number of these images in black and white. Um, which I but did. one is holding a baby. Who, yes. Who's yes, that one's called The Savior. Yeah. One of the most successful ones in, in terms of the gallery mm -hmm. uh, exhibitions. And um, I told him I never do that. And he said, yes, I know you never do that. That's exactly why I'm asking you to do it because I think you're going to, you know, grow and push yourself and yeah. do, do something really amazing. So a lot of the body of the work that was used for, for his album at the time were all black and white images. There were some color images that were used for press, interview right. magazine and Vanity Fair and you know magazines like that picked up some of these photos to run for the promotion of the album. But that was <laughs> it. Very, very few images from that big shoot were actually seen in 2002. So the shoot happened in 2001, after about two months after 9-11 in November uh, of 2001. And then actually the album came out yeah, the spring of 2002. Okay. So at that time, you know, it was seen, you know, a little bit. Of course, you know, David Bowie was always David Bowie, but he wasn't at the at the, the 2001. David Bowie was not at the most famous and at, at the most, you know, uh, active of his career. They had previous moments before, and of course, now after he passed away. Oh, of course, yeah. His legacy just grew exponentially. I mean, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. So when he passed away in 2016, I, the same day that, that, that he died, I remembered, you know, how many great photos there were from that shoot that no one ever seen. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's quite remarkable to have so many unseen photos of one of the biggest stars of our time, you know. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I looked at these photos and, and you know, called my only gallery that I had at that time in Miami, the Markovitz Gallery. And mm -hmm. I suggested, what about doing, you know, very, very quickly uh, an homage and, and, you know, I called it David Bowie Unseen. And they went along and then Fujifilm you know, amazingly decided to sponsor it all and, you know, mm -hmm. help me with the scanning and everything of these images, because as I said, they were not digital. So yeah, all shot to film. Within yeah. about a month, you know, uh, yes, all very high res, you know, scans, 600, yep. 700 megabyte scans, imagine. Mm -hmm. it, takes, it takes work, you know, to process all that. And then, so within less than a month, the exhibition happened in Miami. And that mm -hmm. just started kind of like a wildfire. It one thing led to another, you know, at the exhibition in Miami, at the opening, I met somebody from Switzerland who introduced me to a, a gallery in Basel. And from there, you know, it's just really nonstop. So within the first six months of being actively working with galleries, the show opened in Paris, Los Angeles, Tokyo, um, you know. Yeah, and the 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 Bowie with the white wolf I, is that the most is that becoming the most iconic or which one of that series is sell, has has sold the the best? The the protector with the wolf it's called the protector is one of six or seven of the most you know 
requested images mm -hmm. from that mm -hmm. series, but I have to tell you, right now it's going really, really fast. It's there are there are over forty images right now that are with the galleries mm -hmm. uh, around the world, and um, I have for certain other exhibitions when I showed in London in twenty nineteen, for instance. I released more unseen images. Um, also in Hong Kong, I, I was like there in 20, also in 2019, actually, yeah, in, in the spring of 2019. And, you know, so each time a new exhibition or in a new city happens, I, I add a couple more images and, I, you know, I have a few more great ones coming. Sure. So one of the ones that you liked a lot, the triptych, um, yeah. it's called a Rhythm Roulette. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, you know, sometimes I use funny names for these images. Well, I, I like the three, we talked recently about the three Bs, Beyonce, Billie Eilish, and then David Bowie, right? So um, recently you shot Billie Eilish. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. I shot her for Vogue, uh, actually around the time of the Hong Kong exhibition. And uh, I shot it for a couple, like there was a couple jobs back to back with her, one for Adobe, very mm -hmm. interesting. She had like some kind of a deal with Adobe. So they did uh, a campaign with her and um, also for Vogue. And so interestingly enough, which, you know, is something that I'm very excited about. Those were photos that really sort of straight from the camera jumped, you know, into the into Vogue and then on the wall of galleries literally overnight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you know when you compare it to some of my other popular works such as Bowie and Beyonce and Gaga and all that it took many years for yeah. that work to be you know actually printed up into gallery type prints and framed up and all of that and and you know by seen by people in that context because right. none of my work, as I kind of hinted before, none of my work was ever created with the concept of it being for an art gallery. It right. was always created for, you know, your typical album cover, magazine cover, advertising campaign, you know. Mm -hmm. which at the time, you know, was, of course, all in print. Yeah. We have only seen the, sh the complete shift to, you when know, when did you shift from film to digital? Around 2004. Okay. Um, digital, I mean, I started shooting some projects with a small digital camera in 2002, but that was, you know, not comparable and not uh, really able to produce high, really high resolution images that you could compare with a, a, a you know, high resolution scan. Mm -hmm. Medium format transparency. Yeah. So uh, in 2004, um, the, the first medium format digital back became available. And um, I actually worked with that uh, for, for several years and redesigned cameras and created accessories and, you know, grips and wow. viewfinders and all that to accommodate the new digital. Um, the new digital, you know, trajectory that mm -hmm. that photography took, and um, you know, uh, nowadays, of course, things have evolved enormously. And you know, right. speaking of Fujifilm, they have now released a hundred megapixel, one hundred and two megapixel actually, camera called the GFX. Oh, and I didn't realize that. That's an incredible camera. It it looks kind of like you know at your typical 35 millimeter camera mm -hmm. except a little bit oversized it's you know it's a pretty pretty hefty camera but mm -hmm. it's just absolutely incredible you know with really fast autofocus and you know just replacing completely the need to shoot film completely yeah so so talk about the beyonce shoot the one you did for her was her debut album yeah right? so Talk about that photo shoot. I mean, you guys probably remember, like she's standing with her arm up, with her arms up, and she's, it's what's that top? It's a, uh, um, it's kind of like diamonds, right? It's diamond, yeah, yeah. So Beautiful. that story started in two thousand, when Beyonce was still obviously a member of Destiny's Child, 
Mm -hmm. You'll remember Destiny's Child, of course, they were amazing. Yes, of course. And I got a phone call at the time from Vibe magazine. Um, that was a very popular music magazine, uh, especially covering R&B and uh, hip hop. And they asked me to shoot two new groups, one called Destiny's Child and one called 702. Um, they were both girl groups. And um, so Beyonce arrived at my studio, I think it was in the summer of 2000. And she, she was with her mother and the other girls at the time, there were still four members of Destiny's Child. They mm -hmm. switched out two and then they became just, you know, they were, and yet most of their careers, they were famous. They were just three girls, but. Yeah. Um, and I remember very distinctively this moment where her mother styled the shoot and I had them all laying on a big plexiglass platform that was lit, underlit. You know, it's just kind of like a dramatic production. And I remember standing, shooting, you know, the, 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 the picture and standing next to her mom. And I kind of pointed at her, at, at, at Beyonce and I said, this one, she has so much charisma. She's going to be a huge star. And her mom looked at me like <laughs> kind of laughing and she said, yeah, no, you know, and so. <laughs> yeah, I already knew that. Yeah, yeah, I already knew that. So I wasn't really, you know, telling her a big, a big uh, secret here. Mm -hmm. And so they loved, apparently loved those photos and in 2003 when she decided to go solo so sony music called me and she said they they said you know beyonce requested you for her album cover and uh you know amazing like one of those stories wow what how flattering is that i mean that's amazing yeah, you, you know, could have picked anybody of course you know just like iman Bowie or you know many of the people that i worked with Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of that stature that gave me these great opportunities. Part of why this is exciting is that they have no limitations. They can absolutely, you know, call mm -hmm. up in any of the most famous photographers. And, you know, and so that helped me a lot growing my own career, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. What do you, what do you think it is? Like you obviously have an amazing connection with all of the people that you've shot, but is there like a common thread that you would say with the, your energy connection or just your philosophy in life or what would you say it is that it, it gives you the ability to connect with so many of these celebrities? You know, there is no real like recipe to it. Yeah. I don't get up in the morning and saying, hey, you know, I gotta mm -hmm. do this. It's just more like, I, I do get very enthusiastic Mm -hmm. You know, despite the fact that I have done this for a long, long time now, it's been it's been over 25 years that mm -hmm. I'm a photographer. And, you know, I've kind of done it and seen it all, so, sort of speaking, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot to do, of course. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, I have a lot of experience, but that does not preclude me from becoming extremely excited, you know, and extremely um, yeah, it's, it's, it's you, you know, making... enthusiastic. And I think right. that, that enthusiasm is probably contagious, you know. Yeah. And so I do get people. I, I think, you know, what, what I also don't follow trends. A lot of photographers mm -hmm. become known to do, you know, when, when, I don't know, ring flash is in fashion and everybody does ring flash. And I never <laughs> jumped on these trends. Maybe to my yeah. detriment, at, to some degree, because sometimes working with fashion magazines, they want a, they want you know people that do a certain thing at a certain time, and I, yeah. I always kind of wasn't interested in that. And I always did my own thing, you know, to this day, where I just have kind of like certain preferences for how I like to light and how I like to, you know, the whole atmosphere and ambiance of a shoot. And what's great and about do you, that? Do you come up with the concept? Do you present the concept? Or is there uh, yes, something it's a collaboration on the concept. other side? Thing. No, we want to. Sorry, yes. what, what was that? It's it's a conversation with with the client or the artist. You know that mm -hmm. it's it's a collaboration. Of course, mm -hmm. I come up with concepts. They have their ideas. They have their concepts. It's you know they get refined in discussion. Or I present the concept, and then they will say yes, but this and that. So you can't really say it's it's not a singular dictatorship here where we where you know. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I read stories about famous photographers in the past who, you know, no one spoke. They were just like, you know, incomplete. 
it's not control, but they were just not letting other people really, you know, contribute mm -hmm. as sure. much, you know, I like to do. I'm very open and it could, I could be on a, on a shoot and I could have certain ideas and certain plans for that shoot, but then even opportunity comes along in whatever that is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a last minute thing, I might sh shift the focus and might say, hey, what if we try this now? We're ready, we could just, you know, and sometimes people get really excited about that, you know, a last minute opportunity for um, something that you didn't expect, you know, like in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the in the example of Beyonce, mm -hmm. how this famous photo came about is actually she had, her mother was styling that shoot as well. And had, she had brought a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of gowns and a lot of things. And among the accessories was this diamond top that they didn't even like. They didn't even consider it. It was not one of their choices. But I kind of like, you know, walked around and saw it and I said, hey, what about this? This looks really interesting to me. And mm -hmm. Beyonce, yeah, I like it, but I don't have anything to wear as like a bottom. I don't want to wear these like big red carpet type, you know, gowns. Right. And so I said, yeah, no, definitely not. But it would look great with denim. And she said, yeah, I, that's, I love that idea, but we didn't bring any denim. So, you know, it's, it's a story I've told many times because it's funny. But I actually said to her, well, you can have my jeans. I'm happy to, you know, get another pair. I, and I, I didn't hear this story. Uh, and she was like, oh, that's, you know, that's a new idea. And so she did, she, she took, she, she put on my jeans and they fit her like a glove for some reason. <laughs> of course, led to a lot of jokes, you know. Uh, yeah. and, um, that's so amazing. On that famous cover, she's wearing my personal jeans that I worn that morning. And, uh, you know, it became this sort of like, you know, talking about going with the flow, you know, this is just yeah. like, not expected. And so what did you wear? She took your jeans. What did you wear? I took another pair. I ran, you know, at the time I had like <laughs> a, a live work studio with a loft yeah. upstairs and all that. So, you know, I ran up. I didn't, you know, some people say, so you were shooting in your, you know, without, without pants. And that's not correct. <laughs> we we I, changed. We changed. I love that. Yeah. Um, there's, there's so many people that you've shot. I mean, is there anybody that stands out as somebody you know maybe the quickest shoot what was the quickest shoot that you've ever done i actually do think and sorry for being you know always coming back to david bowie but it was the quickest shoot in terms of notice because when he actually called me you know he told me like a couple months early he wanted to but it was mm -hmm. not in, mm -hmm. in in production yet so when from the moment that he called me to the moment that the pictures were were shot it was very nine to five he told me you know i'm going to be there for this shoot all day, nine to five. Yeah. But at five, I'm leaving. I don't like long photo shoots, makes me tired or whatever. And um, so all these images that you see of Bowie, mm -hmm. I said, you know, over 40 at, in, in, in various galleries around the world, they were all shot from nine to five. Um, and so that was definitely in many ways the quickest photo shoot. But, you know, I do love so many people that I have shot, you mm -hmm. know, I I'm just know. looking through your website right now and just scrolling through. I mean, you, everybody, Keanu Reeves, Usher, I mean. Eva Mendes comes to mind as, you know, someone had really loved shooting. Uh, Britney Spears, of course, you know. Kanye. Oh, yeah. How was it? Sorry? How was it shooting Britney? Amazing. You know, the, yeah. it was at the height of her career in 2004. Um, she hired me to shoot promotional pictures for her tour, the mm -hmm. Onyx Hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, these pictures became so many things after that Vanity Fair covers and merchandising and album art and two perfume campaigns, two fragrance campaigns for Elizabeth Arden were all drawn out from that one photo shoot. And um, that's amazing. I mean, you know, definitely one of the best experiences of my career working with her as well. Um, and Mariah Carey was amazing, you know, the, her, her comeback in 2005 with the emancipation of Mimi was, mm -hmm. was great, you know. But I equally enjoyed shooting, for instance, you know, uh, very recently Billie Eilish or, you know, other mm -hmm. people uh, like Carly Rae Jepsen, for instance, you know. Uh, I mean, there's mm -hmm. such a long list of amazing 
people. Oh, you know, Kanye. Um, did you shoot any of the Kardashians? Yeah, I shoot. Uh, I shoot a couple of them. I shoot okay. Kim a few times, and uh, I shot. And Jay Z. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who yeah. else? Who else stands out as kind of the most um, most difficult? Would you say? Not to throw anybody under the bus, but who would you say was the most difficult, most challenging? I actually think that, you know, a lot of times people ask me and they would expect that the divas, you know, the, 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 yeah. the ones that are considered demanding would be the most mm -hmm. difficult. But in my case, that, that really didn't, you know, mm -hmm. didn't turn out that way. It was more uh, actually, I remember shoot with Chris Rock mm -hmm. that uh, for a magazine cover. Yeah. And, he seemed very not so excited about taking photos in general. Mm -hmm. He just seemed like he wanted to like talk and crack jokes. And, you know, as soon as I start aiming the camera at him and, you know, kind of had to just take a pose, he kind of walked off set and didn't really, you know, and I, I felt it wasn't his thing. He didn't like right. to, right. you know, just be like that frozen moment. You know, he just likes to be very animated. So it was more difficult than expected because of his reluctance, you know, to mm -hmm. be photographed. And I could see it was just something that from the second he walked in, that he would like to prefer, he would prefer talking and, and, and telling jokes than posing. Yeah. Well, and it's very so intimate. It's a very intimate exchange whenever you're photographing somebody like that, especially yeah. in this. You know, usually men are easy to shoot. Okay. Because you, there's no, not much of a hair makeup process. There's not much mm -hmm. of a, you know, change. Women change their looks so much. They reinvent themselves. I mean, think of Madonna, you know. How many times have, has Madonna during her incredibly mm -hmm. long career, you know, completely reinvented That's herself. Crazy. Usually yeah. male, male celebrities or even male models, they don't go through such an extreme change. Mm -hmm. Maybe Bowie did change a lot, of course, you know, but in, 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 um, in most cases, men, men's shoots are fast and easy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Chris Rock was very nice. He was like, you right. know, really sweet guy. I just could feel that hesitancy. Do that you think it's because maybe he was shy? Maybe, you know, maybe he just, you know, it is a very intimate, ex you know, exchange. So do you say... I didn't, you know, I didn't confront him. I didn't say, hey, you know, why, why aren't, why aren't you like excited to, you know, right. to be in front of the camera here? I was just trying to like, you know, connect with him. And then we did, we did uh. end up getting some really, really great photos that I absolutely love. And I think he liked them a lot too, you know, right. and so that happens as well. You who would you, who would you say would, is the shyest celebrity that you've ever shot? Um, I would have to think about that. I mean, shy celebrity. I mean, it might be him, you know, it might be right. him. I think there were definitely people that were much more quiet. More and more introverted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Kim Kardashian, for example, believe it or not, um, you know, in the photo shoot situations that I met her, mm -hmm. she is very quiet and she's not at all, you know, what you would expect. Mm -hmm. I, a TV reality star, you know, they generally, I, I worked with a few others, you know, that, that became primarily famous from, from reality television that mm -hmm. are really loud and really, you know, very, very excited about the photo process and all that. She right. was super quiet, you know, and maybe even like, you know, you could, you could interpret it as shy. I don't know if I would label it that way, but I was right. just quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you typically do as an icebreaker as you're, when you're starting a photo shoot? As I said, I don't have a recipe. You know, I don't okay. go in with a plan. I'm going to say that and I'm going to get her to read that. Not at all. I, I, I don't actually even really prepare in that sense mm -hmm. where, you know, if I shoot somebody, I don't necessarily systematically watch all their movies and listen to all their albums. I, you know, I will generally already know a little bit about them. Right. And if they're new artists, of course, I will listen to their song or something, but I'm not going to be obsessing with the fact, you know, yeah. I learned what all the things I know about David Bowie's career. I, most of them I probably learned after 
you know, because I was interested once I met him mm -hmm. to, you know, to find out more. But I think, you know, I had relatively limited knowledge, like, you know, like everybody else, we know a few songs, we know a few things, we remember yeah. Ziggy Stardust or something, but we don't necessarily know all of the periods and the different, you know, albums and all of that and what came after what and you know so i i am not a fan that does you know that kind of preparation to extend to be sure. unless it's really what's well, really more organic good. it's more organic that way and more yes yes I work, oh, I, I work intuitively I with, you know, with with concepts that that just come to mind for they are maybe more personal than just responding only to what's mm -hmm. already there in the like, Absolutely. Artist, you know? That makes sense. I, get I don't it. want to produce the same pictures that, you know, other photographers would. Right. Um, because there is, you know, let's say someone has a famous movie and then they're going to want to do something based mm -hmm. on that movie and the character and so on. I mm -hmm. kind of stay away from that. Okay. What would you what would you say was the most um, extreme shoot as far as the the location the most exotic location I guess. Um, I shot on some you know like I shot on on some cliffs and mountain tops and mm -hmm. things like that a fashion campaign that was actually on my Bravo show too you know mm -hmm. uh, and I worked with a lot of wild animals. Mm. black panthers and wolves and where where was that these are generally situations in studios you know okay. it's janet jackson um oh tell us about janet jackson i, I oh. wanted to shoot her with black panthers okay and, um it was yet another magazine cover shoot and mm -hmm. i proposed this idea and she loved it but she said she's not going to be in the room at the same time you know <laughs> <laughs> with the Panthers, but, you know, we can shoot yeah. the same day, but she would definitely not want to be, you know, mm -hmm. posing with the Panthers. So it was, you know, through a post-production process that uh, I combined it all, but in the same light with the same environment and all of that, which, you know, it's, it's, it's how these things are done. And, um, you know, I've... I was scared. I was definitely very, very scared because there were three Panthers all roaming around the studio at some point, you know, and wow. I, I did use the longest lens I brought because I didn't <laughs> want to be so, but they move so fast, you know, in a, in a even if it was a hundred foot studio or very large studio, if they, if they decided to, you know, jump, they, they definitely, definitely could. Yeah, absolutely. And these uh, must come with trainers, with handlers, uh, but you know, they are very, very wild. When, 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 a, when a panther roars, you know, it goes right through your bones. I mean, we're programmed to, 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 you know. So I have to say, I was definitely, you know, my camera was definitely shaky a little bit <laughs> when, you know, when I took these pictures. But Janet mm -hmm. was amazing, you know. She was absolutely, this was in 2006, I think. Okay. Yeah. Something was, like that, that. was that before or after the Super Bowl? I can't remember. Um, I think before. I think before I think before. Okay. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. Don't quote me. I I mean okay. it, I, I can't. It might, be, it might be before, but you know when I when I saw her like walking in and I you know she literally looked like she just came out of an an eighties music video. She looked really really great, and um, a lot of times an amazing artist. You, you meet these celebrities on a photo shoot and they're not wearing a lot of makeup because they're coming to the photo shoot so they're not you know they're not. Mm -hmm yet fully ready and you see them in you know in their real you know just uh at seven o'clock in the morning jennifer lopez walking in in flip-flops you know and a t-shirt and i never seen a more a, a woman more glowing and more beautiful you know so uh -huh. a lot of times the image of certain celebrities doesn't even do them justice they're actually even more amazing you know sure um and then, have... you know, there are other situations where mm -hmm. a model walks in in, in in the morning and you don't you don't even realize, oh, that's the model using, oh, you're the makeup yeah. artist or something, because they don't necessarily have that. They don't necessarily project the image that, you know, you mm -hmm. see in their portfolio because that's something they, you know, they put on. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a blank canvas, you know. When so was the first time you shot J-Lo? Do you remember? The it first was, it, yeah, it was in the mid 2000s, maybe 2006, 
Netflix as well, yes. Okay. Uh, it was also for one of her albums and, you know, Billboard cover and things like that. Love yeah. working with her. I worked with her over, I think it was a three day shoot, a really, really big shoot. And, you know, she's incredibly nice and, and great to work with. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, people always, you know, want to hear drama and stories of, you know, difficult celebrities. But I've been very, very lucky. I encountered very little difficulty in terms of people being uncooperative or difficult or demanding. Mm -hmm. uh, even those with the most demanding reputations were extremely reasonable and very easy to work with, you know? Yeah, that's good to hear. I like that. Um, so you have some an exhibition coming up uh, in Ibiza, right? In, um, yes, yes. In, is it uh, May or June? when is the, the exhibition? Uh, I, I believe it starts very soon in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's something that's just literally happening sort of as we speak. Mm -hmm. It's all being organized, you know, uh, my gallery in Sweden and, and uh, um, these amazing people from Ibiza all met and talked and, you know, called mm -hmm. me up and say, hey, we want to do all this. And um, obviously Ibiza is interesting because it's a place where a lot of musicians and a lot of the European, you know, movie stars and all that hang out you know speaking of Ibiza for instance I worked with David Guetta the, you know the famous DJ oh, yeah. Yeah. who is sort of the king of Ibiza I, I guess you know yeah uh, I shot his album cover and his L'Oreal campaign and his wife's fragrance campaign and so you know whenever somebody talks to me about anything I generally will have a few stories that you know related <laughs> to Oh, yeah. you know, this person or that location, or this is where I shot Lady Gaga or, you know, so it's, it's fun to be, to be a celebrity photographer. I enjoy so much what I do. And, yeah. you know, I, 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 it was difficult to go through this pandemic, you know, 2020. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, and you're, have you been in LA pretty much the whole time? Uh, yeah, I'm hanging out, you know, here in, in New York and, um, uh, you know, avoiding traveling too much and, you know, but mm -hmm. I usually go back and forth between Europe and, and, and the yeah. US a lot and mm -hmm. Tokyo, I, I'm in Tokyo quite often. Um, so, yeah, well, I'm excited for us all to be able to travel more. Um, we have have to... you been traveling a lot? I, you know, I went to Aspen uh, mid-year last year and then I went to New York recently last month. I went to New York. How was that? Did, did you feel comfortable flying? Um, I felt comfortable flying, to be honest. I did. Yeah. Um, everybody's masked up. I mean, the, uh, I, I didn't have a problem at all flying. That's I, like, cool. I, but, you know, I've, you know, been here in LA and stuck at home and, you know, being very careful for a year, just like everybody else. So I mean, that's, that's great to hear that people work. mask up at the airport because every time I open my front door, I see, you know, people walking by jogging groups of people and no one's wearing any mask and that's been sort of like i don't know is it is it is it you know particularly my experience but i feel like people are just not taking this seriously so you know and then i see these images from miami the spring breakers and all that I'm like yeah well, you know we're just going to prolong this forever if if people don't you know don't right. take more seriously no i know absolutely people need to take it seriously and i think you know they're rolling out the vaccines i have a lot of friends actually in in colorado new york it, other lo other locations that are get, getting it all ages now so i know i saw that new york just starting to it's it, it, yeah it, over 50 you can get it now in new york and lots mm -hmm. of lots of states are dropping all the um the age requirements yeah, yeah absolutely so yeah. you know fingers crossed absolutely well i'm i'm glad that you're well and i'm I'd love to continue this conversation because we could talk all day, but um, thank you everybody for joining. And I will archive this on my Instagram so that you can watch it, rewatch it, share it. Um, but Marcus Klinko, thank you so much for taking time today. And uh, it's really great to talk to you again after so many years and let's, you know, let's keep, uh, let's keep working on stuff. We will, we have some things in the works. So we'll keep you guys posted. So awesome. All right, Marcus. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining. Bye, Bye. everybody.